Dala, 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 dala. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you about dreams as a little photo up to some of the questions I've received, but also to deepen our discussions about different types of dreams. Oftentimes when people talk about dreams, we are talking about the kind of dreams that oftentimes take us outside of them of ourselves. Meaning that in the dream realm you may go and explore the earth, the physical earth as it is. You may go and explore countries and places you've never been physically. You may even go and explore the outer world beyond our planet, beyond our consciousness, and even for some of us beyond the particular dimensions or universe we know while awake. All of those explorations are well and delightful and informative and of course for every single person that experiences those things, there is a reason for it. It's part of your path, it's part of your growth, it's part of your experience. Now, I want to turn your attention to a different type of dream. Dream that are less talked about, but that are as important as the rest of it. You know, exploring the land and exploring the different worlds is fantastic, it's amazing. But it also as important to explore your world within. So this is what I was going to talk to you about today. The dreams that take you deep within yourself. Deep within your own consciousness. And this has been a subject long coming and I had to wait. I had to patiently wait for some of you. Some of you who thought this information before and some of you who have been reluctant to look at this information. Oftentimes for those of you who've asked and searched, the question you've asked was, why don't I remember my dream? And the answer to that question is not a simple one. This video is not for everyone. Some of you may not relate. Some of you may not even understand what I'm talking about. For some of you, this may stay in the realm of entertainment, which is fine to each his own. But this particular video is meant for those of you who have asked the question, who have come and who will lead straight to this video. As for me, this was a time I was called to finally speak on these particular type of dreams. It is not going to be something easy, so I want you to relax and ease up. I want you to not take whatever I am going to say in this video personal. It is not about you, even though it is about your experience. This is not to attack your belief or tell you what you need to do. This is simply to present to you few things that may not have been in your awareness or in your sight or in your thought before. Simply for you to consider them. This may be something that applies directly to you for some of you. For others, this may be something you may need in order to understand someone close to you, someone you may meet, or even a stranger. There are dreams that do not take us anywhere but deep, deep within our own self. For some of us, those are dreams of delight, those are dreams of apprenticeships. Those are dreams that pushes us to work on our character, our true character. 
Some of those dreams push us to face the things we refuse to face while we are awake. Some of those dreams come in to show you what is within ourselves. It has nothing to do with other people. It has nothing to do with politics or anything going on in the outer world. But it has to do with what is going on within your own self. As more often than not, it is what is going on within yourself that is creating and impacting what is going on outside of you. Some of you don't remember your dreams. Not because you truly do not remember, but because you choose not to. And before you start being riled up and all of that, it is a natural mechanism. If for those of you who studied a little bit of psychology, a little bit of, uh, of biology, if that means anything anymore, a little bit of even neurology, uh, who have been curious about how memory works and how our sight works and how everything that you've seen and thought of never disappears. It may go and travel somewhere else, but it remains in your memory bank, accessible at all times from anywhere. So when you say that you do not remember your dreams, what some of you may say is that what you've seen, what you've been shown, you refuse to face, you refuse to accept, or you simply refuse to deal with. And the fact that you do not remember, or do not accept, or do not want to deal with, does not erase it. It does not make it go away. It's not because you turn your attention to something else that anything else that, that exists will just simply disappear. It is required of all of us, of each of us, that we face all the different pieces of who we are. Not so that we can roll up in a corner and start crying or pity ourselves or feel so shameful that we become paralyzed. On the contrary, because as we look at what is within ourselves, as we look at all of our parts, the great one, the beautiful one, but also the ugliest one, the dirty, by looking at this, we can acknowledge them and we can clean it it's nothing to be said to be easy. And for some of you who have been refusing for a very, very long time, it may also take you a longer time to clean up. For those of you who are noticing certain things here and there, it is upon the moment that you notice it that it is brought to your attention that you shall turn to it and clean it up. That you to turn to it and decide to transform, to transmute and change it once and for all. This is certainly easier said than done. Nothing is here. Nothing here is going to be easy. And this is one of the things that we must remember, before we always want to be victims and blame everybody else, you have to remember that certain things are always going to be hard. There's a portion of it that has to be hard in order for us to fully appreciate the depth of it and its meaning, its true meaning and value. Simple example is childbirth. The pain that you go through when this process begins, as it continues, it would be easier to just blame it on God, to just blame it on nature, the universe, or whatever else you want to call. Because you do not fully understand that it is through that pain that you appreciate that first cry, that first breath that your child takes. 
that when you look in your baby's eyes once it is born, that you understand the pain, that you understand it was all worth it, and that you can no longer be the same person you were before. It is a choice to make. No one can force you to change, can force you to improve, can force you to aim to improve yourself. But the universe and circumstances are certainly going to try. And all you have to remember in all of that is that the choice is always yours. The person you are is the person you want to be. If that person is not who you aspire to, then it is part of your responsibility, part of your duty to change it, to become somebody else, to become a better version of yourself, or as some will say, to finally become your true self, to finally learn what is appropriate, when it is appropriate, to learn the things that help you live in harmony with others. To also learn to recognize and use your discernment. And those dreams that you do have, they can show you who you truly are. They show you circumstances, situations, characters, personages, some of them part of you, some of them outside of you that come into your inner world to bring things to your attention. Some of those nightmares that you've been having have nothing to do with what you watch on TV. They have nothing to do with what you observe, what happened to your parents, or what even happened to you. Some of those nightmares that you've been having have to do with who you are right now, or the path that you are taking. And then it becomes then up to you to decide to choose a different path to be someone different and to be someone better. So this was just a light introduction for some of you who were wondering about this, who had questions. The answer you seek is in what you refuse to look at. So do whatever it may take, put on some goggle, put on a suit, put on sunglasses if you like, put on some clothes, get back in that dream, and clean the things that do not belong there. But one thing is for sure that you do have to remember, the dreams in your inner world are tied to your awakened state. You will never be able to clean up your inner dreams if you do not clean up your inner life. Whatever gushy, negative, toxic, aggressive, um, hurtful, painful thoughts, wish you may have while you are awake are oftentimes translated into or sank within your own self. Those are the monsters and the demons you may encounter in dreams in your inner world. That encounter, that grab of attention to push you to look at this is or may be the very reason why You refuse to remember those dreams. You refuse to also accept your part of responsibility in whatever experience you may have. That responsibility is not about you provoking things, having provoked things, or things being unfairly done to you. The share of responsibility that you do have is about your perception of your experience and is about 
the decision that you make because of those experiences, those are 100% and fully your responsibility. No one can take that up for you. No one can change those up for you. And as 2019, or as any year for those of you who may listen to this in the years to come, as the year is winding down, the opportunity to decide and choose change grow greater. This has nothing to do with New Year's resolutions. It has to do with the rhythm of time and the seasons. This is also why I was called to speak on this now. Now, with the energy of the winter, for those of us in the northern hemisphere, living in the northern hemisphere, winter is the time to go inwards, just like the trees, just like all of the hibernating animals. We go inward and we start the cleanup. I'm not telling you this just because I have to. I'm telling you this because it is one of the keys that you do need as you explore your own path, as you question yourself about who you are and who you would like to be. Dreams are portals to almost every place you can possibly potentially imagine and beyond. Your inner world is one of your most sacred place. One that belongs to you. One that is under your responsibility. And even though it may sound a little bit scary for some of you, it may sound a little bit hard. There is never responsibility without also duties and privileges. You become responsible for something because you also have the privilege that comes with that responsibility. And no one in no situation can only enjoy the privilege without also feeling and enduring the responsibility that comes with it. So there may be things that you've done there may be things that you've said. There may be things that you've thought of. Now is the time to become whole with yourself. To attend to the things. To clean those things. And for you to decide who you truly want to be. So next, the next time you dream of something unpleasant, the next time you dream of something deeply connected and rooted to you that may scare you, ask yourself where it comes from. Ask yourself if this is what you want to continue building and feeding or if you want and truly desire something different. The answer will not be a phrase or something you will say. Don't put it in the comment, it will not matter. The answer will be transcribed in your actions, not in the dreams, but in your day-to-day -day activities. The way you show or the way you know you're on your way to transformation is when you start acting like this person you want to be, like the person you should be, like the person you truly are. And even though I spend a lot of time talking about the cleanup and the nightmares and the darker things that are within yourself, though not coming from outside, 
that you need to face and clean up. There is also the beauty and the prestigious wisdom and love that reside also within yourself. But for a lot of you, that beauty and that love is not as heartfelt because of all the dirt and the dust and the gunk around it that you need to clean up. And this will not come with any form of ritual. This will come with a true decision of your heart to change, followed with meaningful actions. This is not going to clean itself. This is going to be hard for most of you. It will be very hard. But it is worth it. And you will only know the worth as you start doing the work. Not before. So, I hope this was helpful for those of you who are on this particular path. You can run from your dreams. This is why you can stop the dreams that you're having. But what you can do is decide what you will make up of these dreams. And especially decide who you want to be. As if you do not decide, something or someone else will do it for you. So, for those of you who do, who had asked about this, I hope this pushes you to look at those dreams a little bit differently. For those of you who do not remember your dreams and who are on the path of this particular subject, what I would recommend is that do not worry about the dreams you do not remember. Worry about who you want to be. And while you're awake, align your decisions and your actions with that person. Get close. Make sure the decision and actions that you take actually support the person you want to be. The dreams may intensify as you start doing this. And be open to be corrected. A lot of you see those dreams and um, correction in the awakened state. Meaning that we tell you that you're not doing something right. When you're being told that you need to do something a little differently. Or that some of the things that you're doing are not appropriate or not, are incorrect. Instead of going on defensive mode. First you need to assess what is being said to you. And assess whether it is actually useful, whether it is actually truthful, whether it is actually helpful to you. Too many times I see people going on the defensive, writing comments and, and blurbing anything, maybe even things that don't even make sense. Simply because once they figured out that what was being said to them did not align with what they did, they just went on defensive mode and stopped listening. The greatest gift of a student is the ability to learn. The greatest strength of a child is also its ability to learn. Even the greatest strength of a teacher is to learn from his own students. Nobody is immune to learning, no matter who you are, no matter what you've accomplished. And sometimes it is much better to have a gentle pat of someone correcting you when the incidence of the correction is not very important, rather than you facing a much stronger and deeper correction that will hurt you a lot more. Sometimes you need to, to put your own personal feeling aside and listen to what is being said to you. That is so important. Your ability to accept correction when correction is actually constructive, when correction is actually meant to help you and is useful to you. And for many of you, 
accept correction when you ask for it. This is probably one of the most ironic points that I've seen. You come and you ask for something. You ask to be guided. You ask to be shown. And when it is shown to you, you start feeling some kind of way. You make yourself feel some kind of way to tell you the truth. Nobody else is making you feel anything else that you do not choose to feel yourself. Because feelings are normally temporary. But when you hold on to it, when you turn feelings into thoughts, into stories, into energy that you repeat and nurture and feed over and over by telling everyone the same pity story you've been used to saying, waiting for people to have specific reaction for you. This is not under the control of anyone but yourself. You are the only person that can stop doing that and work on going towards the person you want to be. Unless this is truly the person you want to be and then you would not need to ask anyone for guidance if you're not willing to receive it. In order for you to receive guidance, you have to be open. Too many of you have already received all the signs that you needed, all the answers that you've been seeking all over. But you've rejected them, one after the other. Because they didn't come in the right package. The wisdom was not said by someone you wanted to accept it from. The signs were not as bright and shiny as you would have wanted them to be. Change your expectation and what will happen to you will change as well. Your experience is your responsibility. There are things, my child, you will never be able to change, that you will never be able to control or impact. There are things that are so beyond your own self that no power of yours will be able to content it. However, beloved, what is always under your control is your perception. What is always under your control is how you will react and act. What is always within your control is to take a step back and use your discernment. While you're awake, as much and as well as you are when you are sleeping. As I said before, there is a connection between whatever is going on in the dream realm and whatever you are going through in your awakened state. These two experiences are always connected. Sometimes they even mirror each other so well that you are able to apply this knowledge directly to your awakened experience and vice versa. But sometimes the connection is less obvious. But it is still there nonetheless. Because the connection between the two realms and the two worlds is you. You are the key. And you do have the ability to decipher that. Because you have the ability to transform yourself. It is a matter of you choosing that. So I'm going to leave you with this. I hope for those of you who are on this path who have asked and searched for this information. That it provides you with the little that you need to keep going. For the rest of you, yes, you can let me know what you thought in the comments. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.